At the start of the third volume of Jane Austen's most loved novel, Pride and Prejudice, Elizabeth Bennet, the heroine, and her uncle and aunt, Mr. and Mrs. Gardner, decide to go on a northern tour. Originally, they had planned to go as far as the lakes, but due to Mr. Gardner's business commitments, they decide to venture no further northward than Derbyshire. For all its celebrated beauties, Dovedale, the peaks, for Elizabeth, the county can mean only two things, the country house, Pemberley, and its owner, Mr. Darcy. It is now several months since Darcy's impetuous, arrogant proposal, the declaration of his feelings for Elizabeth and her angry rejection of him. But she's beginning to reflect more deeply now on her sentiments towards him, partly as a result of the long letter he writes explaining his behaviour towards Wickham. And the Northern Tour intensifies this process of reflection. It marks a crucial point in the novel and in the heroine's growing self-awareness and her realisation of her feelings for Darcy. Towards the end of their tour, the party pass within a few miles of Pemberley and Elizabeth's aunt suggests they make a detour to go and see the house. Elizabeth is at first distressed. She thinks she has no business there and she's worried about bumping into Darcy. However, when she's reassured that the family are not at home, she decides that they should pay a visit and she becomes more curious. As they near the house, the description that is given has led many to believe that the house is modelled on Chatsworth. It is described as a large, handsome stone house, standing well on rising ground and backed by a high ridge of woody hills. Elizabeth's first impressions are very good. She is delighted by the house. The narrator reports that she believes that there is no place that nature had done so much for or where no natural beauty had been so little counteracted by an awkward taste. The whole group expressed their admiration, and Elizabeth, Elizabeth feels at that moment that to be mistress of Pemberley might be something. They decide to go inside the house and are shown round by the housekeeper, Mrs Reynolds. Elizabeth's first impressions are confirmed when she's inside. She is delighted by the views from within looking out and believes there are beauties to be seen from every window. She judges that the rooms are lofty and handsome and she's also very struck by the furniture which is elegant but not gaudy. She's also very impressed by what Mrs Reynolds has to say about her master and is rather surprised when Mrs Reynolds says she's never had a cross word from him in all the years she's known him since he was four and that he is the best landlord and the best master. Mrs. Reynolds shows them into a room downstairs which contains miniatures of both Darcy and Wickham, who has grown up in the house brought up by Darcy's father. Elizabeth compares the two, rather confused, confusedly, in some confusion. And when she admits that she knows Darcy a little, Mrs. Reynolds suggests that, they, that she goes upstairs to view a finer, larger picture of her master. And it is Elizabeth's more thoughtful contemplation of this larger portrait which is the crucial step in her re-evaluation of her feelings for the owner of Pemberley. <laughs>